this is Kathy Klemper with Kathy by Design. Welcome to my studio. I know you don't usually see my face, I only show my hands, but now you have my face to go with my hands and my voice. I thought today I would take you on a little tour, mini tour of my studio, focusing on ribbon storage. I know we all storage is the thing that we all struggle with the most, keeping things organized, easy to find, accessible, so that the goodies we have on our stash don't go to waste. I have a lot of ribbon. I've been on the really reasonable ribbon design team for I think almost 10 years now, and finding ways to store it compactly and logically has been a quest of mine. And I recently had a new idea for ribbon storage that I wanted to share with you. But before I do that, I just want to show you three different ways that I store ribbons, also threads because I sew on my cards, and then I'll give you a quick, uh, just a quick overview of my studio where I work pretty much full time. So I'm going to, you can see behind me, this is my wall of buttons and sequins and I have a lot of them. I collect vintage buttons. I love them and I use them extensively in my work. This is a CD rack that I picked up at a yard sale for two dollars. That's one of my tips. Look for storage solutions that do not come from a scrapbooking store. You're always going to pay premium prices at a scrapbooking store, but guess what? You can find great storage solutions in unusual places like this CD rack at a yard sale, check estate sales, check thrift stores. This is a spice rack and it works great for little jars of sequins. So look for storage that in places where you wouldn't usually look for it. Hardware stores have great storage solutions and they cost a fraction of what you pay at the scrapbooking stores. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn this camera around and we'll take a look at different ideas that I have for storage. So don't go away, I'll be right back. This is my main work area. I have a very small craft room, it's about 10 by 10, and um, I've tried to utilize it as best as I can. These are all my punches, paint brushes, uh, various small handheld tools, and my son built these sewing machine boxes for me, they're just awesome. Here's my fantastic rail cutter that I love. This is where I film all my videos. So when you see me working and talking, this is where I am. This is an old kitchen table that my husband and son converted into a worktop for me. And this is where I store all my distress inks. Again, this is a little curio cabinet that I picked up at a yard sale for 50 cents. And I turned it on its side and it holds my distress inks, which I love. I have my adhesives in a strawberry basket. <laughs> There's my ot light. I have chipboard in another strawberry basket. And actually this little divided guy I've had since high school, but it works great for scraps of cardstock, my pens, my scissors, rulers, bone folders, and all of those items. Then panning to the left, this is where I keep all my reinkers, a lot of beads, and this again was an item I picked up. It's an old printer's tray. I grabbed it at a yard sale for I think $10 and it's solid wood. So this has been with me for a long time. Then over here, this is shelving that I bought at Michael's and it just holds bins that have my flowers, uh, various like glue sticks, things like that. And that is there. So that brings us to this wall that you saw behind me. With all my jars of buttons, I have them organized by color and size so I can find them easily when I need them. All of my sequins, all the things I use all the time. And this brings us down to the top of this nine cube uh, section that I also got at Michael's years ago. Wait till they go on sale. <laughs> and this is my ribbon tying area. A lot of you ask me about my ribbons and I do use ribbon extensively in my work and I love to tie beautiful bows. Here's how I do it. This Zutter Bow It All tool. And I keep it right behind my work area so it's very handy. My ribbon scissors are attached to one of the rods so that I always know where they are and I only use them for cutting ribbon. And then behind that I have spools of burlap string that I use all the time, baker's twine, which is a growing collection. I've recently 
developed an affinity for Baker's twine and then metallic string. Over here are some uh, German glitter glass and small containers from Rene Bouquet's, again, stored in a spice rack. And then more jars of buttons. This turntable is from uh, Harbor Freight and my friend Jenny Nemchak bought this for me. And it has re-inkers, it has prills, it has glitters, um, little clips, embossing powders, and that is there. So that's another example. If you bought this at a scrapbooking store, I think they were going for around $100 at the time. And this at Harbor Freight was $24.95. So you can't beat that. Um, this little colander aged out of my kitchen because the paint started chipping. And I had short pieces of Baker's twine and, I, and some string. And I wanted to put them in a place where they would be accessible. I bought these wooden clothes pins at the craft store and you can see I've just wound my baker's twine around them. I leave it long on one end and then I tie a bow so that I can get to these quickly and easily. So that is another ribbon storage. I'll just pan the wall. This is right here. I've got some scrapbooking layouts of my family. I've got my display shelves above my work desk. And then that little crate over on the left is where I keep all my embellishments. We'll do uh, one of these videos on embellishment organization and my computer desk where I write my tutorials and edit my videos. So I'm going to turn this off now and move to the other side of the room and I'll show you another idea for ribbon storage. All right, guys, this room is really small, but um, I think I can show you these two carts I bought at Michael's again on sale. And the reason I bought them is because they have this grid system in the top. And this is how I organize the bulk of my ribbon. You can see I've organized it from by color and then from light to dark and the various shades, the color families are all together so that I know, for instance, if I need a blue ribbon, I can find the blues very quickly and easily. So this has been a lifesaver. The way I put the ribbons, in this cart, I use um, heavyweight chipboard and I cut it to a height of three and a quarter inches and I either do an inch or an inch and a half depending on the width of the ribbon. I wind the ribbon around the cardstock piece and then I secure it with a quilting pin and I keep the name of the ribbon on it because I have to write blog posts and I need to be able to know what the name of the ribbon is. And um, if I don't do that, then I have to go hunting online. So this saves me time. You wouldn't have to do this part unless you just wanted to know for restocking purposes. But this is a very efficient, um, affordable way to store your ribbon. And if you didn't have these carts with the grids, you could possibly build something. I'll show you what I've done down here in this drawer. This is where I keep oversized ribbons, seasonable ribbons, and a lot of my lace. I've taken shoe boxes and I've partitioned them off with pieces of heavy cardstock and my ribbon is wound in there. So that is a very handy way for me to keep ribbons. And I, like I told you, I have a lot of it but you can see, I can find things. And that is the key in your shop, in your studio, do things in a way that you can find them. So that's the second way that I store ribbon. This is my sewing table. I only have one window in this room and it's recessed. So my husband built a little table for me, like a countertop, but between the two closets. There's a closet on this side and a small closet on this side. So he built this little sewing table. The light is good. I have a bunch of my textiles stored there, a bunch of my vintage buttons, buttons on button cards. And again, these are sewing drawers and various storage solutions my son built for me. But what I wanted to show you is how I store my thread. And again, these are yard sale finds, you guys, and they're so cheap. These little curio cabinets, nobody wants them anymore. 
but they're great for us crafters. And I got this one for a dollar and fifty cents at a yard sale. It's solid wood. It's not MDF. It's I mean, it's really nice. I could paint it white if I wanted to, but I kind of like the eclectic mix of different woods because uh, I'm kind of an eclectic person. <laughs> and on the top, I have my few remaining wood block stamps. So double storage, both for thread and for my stamps. And on the wall opposite that, I have more thread, um, vintage corsage pins and a vintage pin cushion, and then more stamps on the top. And again, I try to sort my threads by color and texture, that sort of thing. It makes it easier for me to work. But that's my little sewing table. This is the third way that I store ribbon. And this is the wall opposite. So there's my work table. There's all that storage I showed you at the beginning. We pan over here. And here's this ribbon storage. And this is a ribbon rack that I picked up at um, scrapbook.com probably 15 years ago. They were clearancing these out. And I was like, wow, that is great. So I purchased it. If you look at Ikea, they have kitchen storage that is very, very similar with the dowel rods. And you could easily reproduce this for not very much money. But my spools of ribbon and lace are on the top. And then on the bottom, I have a lot of my trims from Renee Bouquet's. And then bits of lace that I picked up from different places. Uh, specialty ribbons, odd lengths that really aren't big enough to put on a spool. But I don't want to put them in my little ribbon cart. And these hang here on these this little clip system. So hold on, I'll give you a closer look of how this works. I'll just show you, this is my die cutting area. It's the opposite side of my work table. And it's where I keep both my hand cranked Spellbinders machine and my electronic machine for when I have a big job to do. Underneath the table is a dresser that I picked up again at a yard sale for not very much money. And in these drawers, I keep dies. So it's very handy. So my dies are close to where I'm doing my die cutting. All right, so here we go. This is the new thing I started doing that I'm very excited about. This is product packaging. This is a tag. The one on the left is just a pretty tag that I had in my stash. The middle tag is a graphic 45 staples tag, you know, that they used to put their metal staples on. And then the third tag with the Rene Bouquet trims is a Petaloo flower package tag. They're good, heavy chipboard, and I hated to waste them. Plus, they were kind of pretty, and they also had the hang tag hole on the top. So what I've done, I'll just come down close, try not to shake everything. Um, I've wrapped my trims around the tags and secured them with little quilting pins. Then this hangs on my ribbon rack and I can quickly and easily find things and it takes up very little space. And essentially the tags are free because they're product packaging. And I know a lot of you guys are like me, you save that product packaging because it's good quality material, but you never quite know what to do with it. Well, here is a great idea. Now, if you didn't have this product packaging, but you wanted to do the same uh, sort of storage, use Graphic 45 large tags. They're good and heavy. And if you wanted to get really fancy, you could use the die and you could cover them with pretty paper, but this works fine for me. The clips, I'll come in close so you can see these. The small ones, these, I got at Melissa Francis on clearance, and but I'm pretty sure you can buy these just about anywhere. They're like an alligator clip with a little hanger hook. And I'm pretty sure Ikea has these as well. This larger one is the one that hangs on the dowel rod on the uh, ribbon storage rack. But anyway, that is my little quick tour. I'll come back another time. We'll talk about paper storage. We'll talk about dye storage. We can talk about embellishment storage. 
flower storage. Let me know in the comments what other of these organizational craft room organization tours and tips you'd like to have, and I'll come back and we'll share these. But this is it for today. Thank you for joining me, Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design in my studio. Go get your craft on. Bye.